Today we're at the Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio, and we're here at the Wade Chapel. Today we're looking for the final resting place of the late great Michael Stanley. Now being a Cleveland native myself, I find a great responsibility for his family and friends that are still around to show a lot more than just his final resting place. So we're gonna take a few trips around Northeast Ohio as we take a hike through the cemetery today. So let's get started. All right, now from the Wade Chapel over here, you wanna make your way over to the Wade Pond. Now, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s around the Great Lakes part of the country, Michael Stanley Gee helped write the soundtrack. He was most notably known as the singer, songwriter, and musician from the group Michael Stanley Band. He would also go on to be a TV personality and our drive home radio DJ from 98.5 WNCX. Hey, Cleveland Michael Stanley here from 98.5 WNCX. I play Cleveland's classic rock weekdays from three until seven. All right, we're on the right side of the Wade Chapel here. And you wanna go over and find this grassy knoll And you'll see this amazing sculpture right here. As your first marker towards Michael Stanley. So today I'm gonna to show you the schools he attended, his downtown mural, the street they named after him, a few spots where the band set attendance records including where the Richfield Coliseum used to be, and of course, his final resting place here at the Lakeview Cemetery. So let's get started. All right, we made it to our first stop here in Rocky River, Ohio. We're at Rocky River High School. And this is where Michael Stanley Gee went to high school. He thrived in baseball and basketball. This is also where he fell in love with rock and roll after hearing Elvis Presley. He would start his first band called the Scepters back in 1965 and would graduate in 1966 before going on to become the heartland rocker of Cleveland. Now the next chapter of Michael Stanley's life, he would go to Hiram College on a baseball scholarship and we're heading there next. Here on the corner of Route 82 and 700, here in Hiram, Ohio. We're here at the Hiram College because this is where Michael Stanley majored in religion and sociology. And fun fact, the 20th President of the United States, James A. Garfield, he went to college here and also came back as a professor. And ironically enough, they're both buried at the Lakeview Cemetery now. We made it to the front of Hiram College. And this is where Michael Stanley would find his calling in music. He would form the band The Tree Stumps, later to be known as Silk, and they would secure their first record contract back in 1969 while he was going to college right here. It's a beautiful college here. Now after Michael Stanley got his first record contract, the record executives would change his name from Michael Gee to Michael Stanley because they already had another artist on the label with the last name of Gee. And the rest is what they say is history. Uh, I like this mural up here. here in Hiram, Ohio. 
All right, welcome back. We're still going right from the Wade Chapel. And I see another famous grave right over here before we get to Michael Stanley. Alan Freed, who coined the phrase rock and roll. He's the reason that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland. I'm not sure you realize this, but Cleveland is probably the legitimate, if not the, if one of the birthplaces of rock and roll because of a man named Alan Freed who christened this music rock and roll there and he got white kids to listen to black music and that's how this whole thing started. But I don't want to get too far into that because I have another video coming out more about him. But once you get to the Alan Freed grave, you just want to turn around 180 and that'll start heading you to Michael Stanley's grave. Now after college, in 1974, Stanley put together the band that would take his name and catapult him to success. The Michael Stanley Band, or the MSB for short. They would record 11 studio albums and would set concert attendance records at the Richfield Coliseum and Blossom. We're here on the corner of Interstate 271 and Route 303 here in Richfield, Ohio. And this was the old entrance to the Richfield Coliseum. Unfortunately, it was torn down back in 1999 and it's just a big open field now. It was taken over by the Cuyahoga Valley Metro Parks. But I'm old enough to remember when the Cleveland Cavaliers used to play here. And I saw my first concert ever here, Metallica, when they toured the Black Album. The Richfield Coliseum is also very important to the Michael Stanley Band. After having a few hits under their belt, such as He Can't Love You, uh, My Town, and Lover, this is where the band would start setting attendance records. Back in 1979, the Michael Stanley Band played here to a crowd of over 20,000 people. Now those numbers were unheard of for a regional band. And then they came back in 1981 and played to over 40,000 people. They began touring with some of the biggest bands around, including the Eagles, uh, Foreigner, Kiss, and the Doobie Brothers. I can't believe Ohio doesn't have some kind of historical plaque here for the iconic Richfield Coliseum. All right, moving on. We made it to our next stop here at Blossom Music. And this is where the Michael Stanley Band would reach one of their greatest achievements by playing to over 74,000 people on a four night stand back in 1982. And it happened right here at Blossom Music. Now after the Michael Stanley Band broke up in 1986, Michael Stanley would start being a TV personality as well. Now we can't talk about Michael Stanley's music career without mentioning his career in TV. From 1987 to 1990, he was on a show called PM Magazine with Jan Jones. Dan Jones. And I'm Michael Stanley. Welcome to the Friday night edition of PM Magazine. And they made that show right here. He also had a follow-up show called Cleveland Tonight that they made until 1991. And Michael Stanley was the host of that also. And that all happened right here as part of the Michael Stanley saga. I also remember an episode of the Drew Carey show where they were auditioning guitar players and Michael Stanley showed up as himself. Hey, 
you're okay. Thanks. Uh, I gotta be in bed like at five o'clock every day. Uh, next. Michael continued to perform to sold out crowds with solo albums while also hooking up with bands such as the Resonators, the Ghost Poets, and Midlife Chryslers. He's released over 40 albums. And here's his grave, right here. Michael Stanley Gee, born March 25th, 1948, and died March 5th, 2021, from lung cancer. And down here it says he was preceded in death by his ex-wife, Denise Skinner, and his mother, Martha Gee Fitzpatrick. Now before we pay our respects to Michael Stanley, I wanna show you the street that they named in his honor in downtown Cleveland. We're here in the Playhouse Square district of Cleveland, Ohio, right next to the world's largest outdoor chandelier. And there's another incredible tribute to Michael Stanley. At first it didn't make sense, why would they put it in Playhouse Square district for a Heartland rocker. But after I read up about it, it made perfect sense. There's that iconic Playhouse Square sign. But if you come down to the corner here, next to this old timey clock, on the corner of Euclid, and Huron Street. Look at this incredible tribute. They named the street Michael Stanley Way. And they put it on this corner because Michael Stanley's father used to be a radio personality down the street here. And then of course later in life, we would all ride home from work with Michael Stanley himself because he worked at 98.5 WNCX right around the corner here so that makes sense why they put the Michael Stanley Way street sign right there on the Playhouse Square corner now like I do with all the famous graves I go to I want to leave a few mementos for Michael Stanley Gee I want to leave my YouTube magnet. If you come by and find my magnet, go ahead and take it for yourself. And I also got a cassette tape of the Michael Stanley band, Heartland. This is what we used to listen to back in the 70s and 80s. Cassette. For all you kids out there with iPods and MP3s, this is what we listen, used to listen to our music on. The old cassette tape. And if you had to rewind it and didn't have a machine, you had to go old school with the pencil. And rewind it that way. Another little trick is you got these two holes in the top. And if you didn't want your sister uh, recording her uh, Madonna or Go-Go's music over your favorite Michael Stanley cassette tape, you just take a piece of tape here, put it over the holes, and this tape will never have New Kids on the Block on it ever. Just good old Michael Stanley. So let's go ahead and We'll leave that cassette tape right there. Now if you come to visit Michael Stanley and find my magnet, feel free to take it. But leave the Michael Stanley band Heartland cassette for Michael Stanley Gee. Fun fact, the Michael Stanley band song, He Can't Love You, was the 47th song ever played on MTV. Now Michael Stanley didn't sing lead vocal on this song, but 
I figured as a tribute, I would play some of his awesome guitar parts at his final resting place. Here we go. Rest in peace, Michael Stanley. Now, if you're traveling downtown Cleveland down I-90, right before Dead Man's Curve, up on Payne Avenue, you may have seen this 2,200 foot mural dedicated to Michael Stanley. It's got lyrics from the song Lover by the Michael Stanley Band. The thank God for the man who put the white lines on the highway line is the line that the audience would always sing to Michael Stanley. They just kind of latched on to that. And if you live in Ohio, you'll understand that line if you ever try to driving a blizzard down the highway. Now this mural was done by artist Wordsmith without the O. And you can find him on Instagram. He's actually a Cleveland native that worked with Michael Stanley. on the show PM Magazine. You got the Michael Stanley Band logo and the typewriter. And 2,200 feet of mural on the side of this building here on Payne Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. So next time you're coming down I-90, Take a look up right before Dead Man's Curve and you might see it. And now you know what it is. A tribute to the late great Michael Stanley. Do they 